All right, I wanted to cover what I consider more of an audiophile switch than what we're actually seeing in the marketplace at um, hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, this is a review of a $30 TP-Link TL SG-108. E, the E on this particular model means that it is a managed switch. So I want to go through this from layer one through layer three. I want to talk about what I think supports uh, my assertion that this is indeed an audiophile switch, and we're going to cover just a, a couple things. Um, first off, switches as a standard have a 25 megahertz clock crystal embedded and then they clock multiply out for that far as um, 10, 100, or 1000 um, uh, megabit per second. And my point being is you can't hear 25 megahertz. Uh, again, I think we all know that human hearing tops out at you know around 20,000 to 21,000 khertz best as we get older that drops off for everybody uh i'm 47 and i right now doubt that i can hear above like 14.5 or 15,000 k hertz um last time that i uh, i checked and i'm probably right there on the curve with everybody else so uh there's no super hearing out there um that i'm aware of um but if anybody has some academic literature on that you let me know so with the 25 megahertz piece discussed, let's move over to what's actually on this TP-Link switch far as isolation. Um, they are using this HST 48002 SAR uh, magnetics package, this transformer package. And if we go to it, uh, we see these are all transformer windings on these guys on this group tech. But what I want to point out is we've seen bandied about leakage and leakage currents. Um, they'd have to be induced currents because this is all transformer gapped anyways. And what I want to really look at here is we are talking <laughs> a half of a Pico Henry maximum at 100 kilohertz at a tenth of a volt. So just let that sink in that this is all we're allowing across this this air gap this, this this is all indeed a moat so with that said let's move up so we we've talked about layer one we've talked about the 25 megahertz base clock we've talked about what this is actually going to allow through far as leakage inductance and we can talk about one thing that applies to all switches is IPv6 versus IPv4. Big difference here is IPv6 does not do broadcast anymore. It is either unicast, multicast, or anycast. So it's not a chatty protocol. So it's it's free performance. If you really want to tweak, is to just go over and use IP version six. It's automatically better than four in a myriad of ways. So we're going to just work through this um, from top to bottom. Uh, we have some system info. I've set the device management IP to dot two. And we see that it has a MAC address. Of course it does if it's going to be managed. Its default gateway is going to be our router firewall. And then later on when we're doing VLANs, your router firewall is going to have to support um, sub interfaces so it can become a multi-armed router where it can have a virtual leg in each one of the vlans that we're going to set up all right so let's go down to switching look let's look at what we have we have um port settings and this is going to be for speed and duplex igmp snooping currently is disabled if we're doing ip foreign network enable igmp snooping if we're doing IPv6, IGMP no longer exists standalone in IPv6. It's kind of already baked in and just built into the protocol because we only have UNI, ANY, and multicast. So it's already there. Lag is where we can take two ports, put them in the lag. We have two lag groups, apply that. And we take those two ports and we can uplink to another switch and we have um, uh, 
more bandwidth at this point, and we have redundancy, so if one of our links fell. But we're going to go ahead and delete that. We don't really need it in the home setting. Our monitoring, and this is actually pretty cool for a $30 switch, is uh, we, ha we have port stats. So we can actually see um, our traffic, our TX bad, our good, and our RX bad. And you're going to see with proper cabling and a uh, endpoint device that is properly amended that doesn't have driver issues that's going to freak anything out that you're rarely going to see these uh, bad columns light up with, with anything. Um, uh, I've got customers that have literally terabytes upon terabytes of uh, trunk data and like zero bad packet uh, and then again I've had clients where you go and you see thousands on this and it's because uh, crappy cabling. I'm going to go to port mirror and this is really cool so uh, port mirror is awesome because we can take a port and we can mirror it and we can toss Wireshark on our our computer that we're gonna take a peek with and look at this you know traffic that's going across it so we don't need to mess with that right now way beyond the scope of this very cool thing here uh cable testing uh this actually works pretty darn decent so i'm going to go to um port one and we're going to apply that and we get it back and i do indeed have a three meter cable on this uh, i've got a 12 foot cable connecting this and uh this is always handy and loop prevention, and uh, I always enable. So enable, disable, leave it enabled. So what loop prevention does, and um, this is more for IPv4, is if you were to take a cable and go from port 8 to port 6, that would be a loop. It could cause a broadcast storm, which would bring your switch to its knees because it keeps forwarding broadcast traffic. This would see that port 8 is talking to port 6, and then it would put one of the two ports into a blocking uh, state, and that would break the loop, break the broadcast, and then you go and um, take care of that. Uh, another potential source for loops, uh, if you have a Wi-Fi uh, port plugged in, a Wi-Fi uh, access point plugged in. All right, I had to pause that, but let's get back to this. Um, on loop prevention, let's say that you have a laptop that's plugged in wired, and you're also on a wireless access point that's plugged into the switch. That is a possible loop right there, just depending on how the laptop's set up. But just enable it, and again, if the loop is uh, detected, it'll shut down or uh, not even shut down. It just depends on the switch. A lot of switches will just go to a blocking state on a port, and that'll stop the broadcast storm. All right, we're going to get into VLAN. So um, the two VLANs that you should really concern yourself with is either port-based or, more likely, 8021Q VLAN. If we go to port-based, this is very simple. It's um, we got 2 through 8. We can specify uh, two, maybe that's our audio VLAN, and we're going to put seven and eight in it. And we're going to apply that, and we'll enable that first. Apply that, yep. We know that all our other configurations will be removed. And there we go. All right, hold on, let's go two, and seven, eight, and apply that that could be our audio devices and they are in vlan this is a little bit limiting i don't like using port based vlan it's very much old school we're going to go to 8021q vlan which is more of an industry standard now we're going to enable this and apply and again yes we're going to lose our other configurations we go okay all right so let's run through this this is going to probably constitute the bulk of the video in explaining this so VLANs are putting things into a broadcast domain. It's a roped off area where we just have a, a set IP address scheme and our devices are going to belong to it. I'm going to take seven and eight. Actually, we're going to go up here first. We're going to say uh, VLAN 10 is our audio VLAN. And we're going to say seven and eight are in that. We're going to add a modify. So I selected on TAD. 
on tag says put port 7, put port 8 into VLAN 10. I'm going to take 5 and 6 now. All right, so we're going to go up here. I'm going to do 20. And I'm going to take 5 and 6 on tagged. We're going to get the tag here in a second. And we place them into VLAN 20. So if we're talking IP4, actually, let me go and um, I want to modify this. I'm going to delete this. We're going to go back to 20, and we're going to call this IoT. So this is going to be uh, all our IoT, maybe HVAC controls, maybe you have a smart fridge. It can all go into this. So we're going to port 5 and 6, and we're going to add those to our IoT devices. We're going to go VLAN 30. Let's say that we have CCTV or security devices. Now we'll leave it CCTV. All right. Uh, the reason that I kind of pick on CCTV is uh, go to Harbor Freight. <laughs> the, the no name, questionable, dubious uh, Chinese manufacturer. Um, I wouldn't even put those on my network. I, I would go with somebody that's actually got a reputation. But let's just say that you want to be as cheap as possible. I mean, hey, we're talking about a $30 switch here, so who am I to argue? We're going to take this, put it on 30. We're going to put 3 and 4 into our CCTV numbered 30 VLAN. All right, so we've got these VLANs set up. So maybe the 10 VLAN is 192.168.10.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask. 20 would be 192.168.20.0 with a 16-bit subnet or 24-bit subnet mask. And then 30 would be 192.168.30.0 with a 24-bit subnet mask. Each of these are in their own separate broadcast domains. And they would rely on your router that is multi-armed, has sub-interfaces, would have a sub-interface of 192, 168, 10.1, 192.168, 20.1, 192.168, 30.1 sub-interfaces. And maybe it also has a 192.168, 1.1, which is, you know, lines up with VLAN 1 ID. And as you can see, we have all this set up. And if I go back to system, we could even have it where, you know, our default gateway would be this. It would be, you know, 192.168.1.1 as an example. And that's where all traffic would go and it'd hit your ISP and the world's fine. So we're going to go back to VLAN. We're going to go back to 802.1Q. We've got our VLANs here. We've got our ports placed in those VLANs. 3 and 4 can't talk to 5 and 6. Can't talk to 7 and 8 unless we have a router that's going to route traffic between these different uh, LAN segments. Now let's move on to tagged. Let's say you ran out of ports. We only have two kind of open ports left, and that is one and two. So the first thing that we're going to see is that we still have member ports in VLAN 1, and we don't want that. So I'm going to go to 1, and I'm going to go not member, And we're going to add and modify this. And what we've done now is we have totally sequestered off all these ports. Only one or two, only one and two are in one, seven and eight are in ten, five and six are in twenty, and three and four are in thirty. That's it. We have totally sequestered this off. We are now relying on an upstream layer three device, your router, to get traffic passing forth between these VLANs. With that said, what we can do now is we can take one and two and we can make it tagged ports to where we can take one and two and connect them up to another switch using the lag. And if you don't want to do lag, I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's say you don't want to waste an extra port. Um, lags are useful if you want redundancy and you want more bandwidth. You're not going to really need that in your home. So we're going to say port 1, and we're going to go tagged. Sorry. we go port 1. 
we are going to tag it. We're going to tag it on one. And I don't think that we can do a, um, a range here, though. So that just depends on the switch. We're going to say port one. We're going to tag port one and add modify. We're going to take VLAN 10, port one tagged, add modify. And you're going to see this happen down here. I'm going to explain this to you as we're doing it. Take 20, port 1, add modify, and finally 30, port 1, add modify. What this means is port 1 will connect to another TP-Link switch, and it will carry any tagged VLAN 1, 10, 20 or 30. All this traffic will now go across port 1. So again, let's reiterate. On tag means that these ports, let's go to 10 and take care of this. We don't want port 1 in it. Oh, sorry. Member ports are going to be here because the trunk, which is what this is, is considered a member port in all these VLANs. So again, any 3.4, any 5.6, any 7.8 traffic, any 1.2 traffic will go over this guy to another switch where we would rinse and repeat this entire operation. All right, let's go to QoS. QoS is quality of service, but there's also DSCP. QoS is layer one, or sorry, layer two. COS, which is class of service, is layer three. Let's just go to port based. And I'm going to take my audio as far as the switch bandwidth. Now remember, this switch does like, I think, 10 or 16 gigs of backplane bandwidth. So it's got plenty. So I doubt you'll need this. But I'm going to give these ports the highest. I'll apply that. Okay. I'm going to take port seven and eight. And we're going to give this the highest priority. There are four cues on this switch. And these are our buffers. I think this switch has like a mega and a half of buffer. So it's going to take that. It's going to take that mega and a half and it's going to divide it into four pieces. So let's say it's 600 kilobytes uh, per buffer. And we have taken buffer number four. And we say, hey, this buffer gets cleared out first and service first before any other traffic. And then we could say our IoT devices. So um, we're going to apply that. We're going to make sure it applies just to be paranoid. We're going to go back to our VLAN. We're going to go back to our Q VLAN. And we're going to look at IoT. All right. IoT devices, we're going to give the lowest. So we're going to go back to QoS. One more time. <laughs> um, QVLAN, or IO2, IoT devices is 5 and 6. So we're going to go back to QoS. We're going to go back to basic. We are going to say 5 and 6 are going to remain our lowest. That means that we're going to make 3 and 4 normal. We're going to apply that. And we're going to make port one also highest. So actually, we're going to make port one highest since it's trunk. We're going to make port seven and eight medium. So audio is medium, trunk's highest. Port two is not used right now. We'll leave it. Normal is going to be our CCTV. And lowest is going to be our IoT devices. Um, honestly, if you're running CCTV, you would make that highest and you'd make your um, 7 and 8 medium. Just depends. You're on a home base network, probably not going to be a big deal, but this is where you can actually set up um, port based and just manually set up whatever port that's in, you can do. So, with that being said, what you can do, and so this is going to get into uh, just if you do have an audio file switch, if you spent that money, you could put something like this TP link in, in the heart of it. 
just so you can get the VLAN support, just so you could do your QoS and do your port base. And you could plug um, an Ether region, you could plug a Bon 8, you could plug a Melco or any of the other switches in the 7 or 8. And uh, most of those are on managed, so they'll, they'll get painted with all this. So that switch by default will be medium based traffic based on anything that you've plugged into it. Um, if you do have anything that is DSCP traffic, um, a couple ways to find that out. One is contact a software uh, vendor on that to see if the product you're using supports DSCP. Uh, if not, you can actually go back to monitoring and port mirror and Wireshark, and you can plug in your 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 device of question, and you can uh, filter and watch for DSCP traffic. And if you see DSCP, then you can obviously go back to Q, uh, the the QoS, and you can do DSCP and just set that up. And on this switch, it's automatic. It'll just um, go with some of the defaults. Uh, there are seven kind of pre. Um, configured defaults that are uh, industry-wide that are accepted. Uh, there's a total of 64. Um, the others are whatever you want them to be, but you're not going to be able to configure it on this class of switch. you got to move up. All right, let's go to bandwidth control. Uh, I'm going to go to um, 3 and 4. Those are our IoT devices, I believe. And uh, let's say they just have the phone home. I, I want to limit those to... Um, uh, We'll say that they can go 1,024 in and they can go 1,024 out. We're going to apply that. So they can't eat any more bandwidth than that. And I want to go to storm control. Now, storm control, um, now they've got this rated in kilobits per second, but it can also be packets per second. So um, I'm going to go to 5 and 6, which is our CCTV system. Maybe we went to Harbor Freight and we bought the cheapest possible no name. Uh, CCTV system. I'm going to enable that and I'm going to say that we're going to rate limit that to um, let's 81.92 that's the max that it can signal and we're going to do all uh, unknown frame multicast and broadcast. So we're going to apply that and that way, if it starts trying to phone home and use your network connection for bot or something like that, um, we're going to rate limit this uh, so it doesn't bring your network down to its knees. And we'll apply that. Okay, so yeah, this is all applied. I just want to make sure. Oops, I did that. Hold on a second. 5, 6. Enable. that and there we go so we've done an effective switch config and if you introduce more of these to the network it's going to be really a, a copy paste you're going to uh, go and you're going to keep your your uh, tagged ports the same on port one you're going to keep your vlan numbers the same but it could be different ports depending on how you want to do it um, you're going to keep your qos queues uh, the the same for the most part uh, remember these QoS, this layer to QoS, not COS, but QoS, it's all from the perspective of the switch. It doesn't go beyond switch. You have to do it switch by switch by switch. DSCP is on every switch, and it's also on your routers because it represents layer 3, and it has to be stem to stern if you want that to work properly. And that's it. So uh, we went through this. Um, if you have questions, we can always you know shoot another video, go do a deeper dive. But again, that's, uh, that's a video for another time.